Good evening, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome back to more Kenshi. I'm Liz. If you want the latest information on what's going on in this channel, latest updates about any series, by all means, I invite you to take a look at the links in the description of this video. That is the Discord server for the channel, where I post all of the uh, latest uh, announcements about what's been going on on various series and the channel, uh, as well as my Twitter, where I also post other kinds of information. Uh, just a, an easier way to get up to date on series, especially if you're following like Battletech and the video stopped and you don't know why, and uh, uh, you know, you, you, you're trying to look at information, but you don't know what video to look at because blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, it was talked about in a Kenshi video or something. Uh, we are leaving Clown Steady today, and we are making course for Drifter's Last. There's a way station along the way, which is fantastic. I forgot this way station was here. We're definitely going to visit it. Um, we're going back into the city again. Oh, we're going to go out the other gate. Okay, fine. Fantaberific, one might even say. Let's uh, let, let's make way for this way station, and then we're going to head to Drifter's Last. I believe there's an armor shop at Drifter's Last. We're going to hope that they have some kind of decent helmet pattern for sale. Especially like a tin can would be great. Oh, oh, crap. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, he wasn't running after us. He's just running after something. What's he running after? He, he just ran out here. Okay, okay, who's this? Escape slave! Rebel farmers! Outlaw swordsmen! Minus seven combat ability. Bone dog, rebel farmers. Wandering assassin from the shinobi thieves. <laughs> the shinobi thief is like, I'm smuggling into the city. I need to make a distraction. Hey, farmer! Can you make a distraction for me? And then he just runs by. We like ourselves some Shinobi Thieves. That one is a Hiver. We are a member of the Shinobi Thieves, remember, so we are fans of theirs. We're traveling at two times speed. They, uh, Clown Steady doesn't immediately enslave... Ooh, Rebel Farmer Bone Dog. You know what, though? Mortez. Come on back here. Clown Steady as a city does not immediately enslave people who commit crimes nearby. Um, the UC is all about slaves, though. So you can commit crimes in Clown Steady, and they'll throw you in prison, and you can get out. Um, Drifter's Last. If you commit a crime in Drifter's Last, which is also UC territory, they will enslave you. The penalty for committing a crime, period, in Drifter's Last, uh, like trespassing, anything, anything that they catch you for and knock you out and capture you, is slavery. So do not commit crime in Drifter's Last. We need to be careful there. Also, if the guards try and, like, you know, extort you at the gates, if you're going to stand up for yourself, be able to stand up for yourself. Do not do not take the, oh, well, beat the crap out of me and put me in prison, then, option. Because they will enslave you. You are going to be a slave if you, uh, if you mess with the guards in Drifter's Last. And you aren't, uh, you aren't able to do it. You aren't able to put your money where your mouth is, that is. I love this terrain. It's so much nicer to work in. Is This is arid as well, right? I imagine this is considered arid. Let's take a look at farming, cotton farm. Yep, this is arid. Which makes sense. I mean, it definitely looks arid. This space down here, is this arid? Because this looks more like uh, what they have in hive territory along the river. Uh, let's take a peek at that. What does that classify as? Also arid, yes. Okay, cool. Good to know. I don't know what the territory along hive, the hive area is. Uh, what's it called? Vane? Is that what it is? That's further north. Um, this channel through here and up and around and down through here. I think it's called Vane. Um, and I don't know what uh, what the fertility, like the, the land type is there. We'll need to cross this water real quick. Looks like there's some paths up. We could probably head up over here, or we could head up over there. We'll head up here, I think. Doesn't look like there's, you know, like a bone dog nest or anything that we have to deal with here. Although we should be in pretty good shape to deal with bone dogs now. 
if we came across like you know seven or eight bone dogs we should actually be able to deal with it our people have been getting tougher ladies and gents they have been getting better 27 toughness on Lort and someday we might even meet Liz we might come across Lort's sister Liz but you never know that, that's an emergent story that has yet to be told in the world of Kenshi. So they do have an extra building. Oh, we can buy this storm house. You can actually buy a building in this way station. Sweet. This way station has very little power. It only has the one wind generator too. So it's not like Squin, like a big city with a lot of power. But you can buy a house in this way station. Which means you could cook stuff, like you could build a stove or whatever here and cook stuff. That's really cool. Let's take a peek at what they have here. Hello, Tech Hunter. Let's trade. Ronin Construction Trader. So you got some leather, lots of construction components, some research books. You have advanced outpost blueprints, which, you know, we eventually want, but I don't want it right now. It's too expensive for right now. Basic furniture, advanced harpoonery. We want advanced harpoonery, but we need other tech first. Because this is going to give us harpoon turrets mark. Oh, no. This is going to allow us to get, like, dual shot harpoon guns, right? Yeah. We need to research harpoon turrets mark to ourselves first. We want that. We don't have the money for it right now. We definitely want that. We can get it from a number of different locations, though, not just here. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely look for that in the future. But th that's one of the reasons we're out here. We're trying to get research books in the long run. One of the reasons. Not exclusive. Scrap tent. We already know that. And this is a camp shelter. Uh, research bench level. One. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I thought we already knew this. Apparently we don't. But I, I know too. Oh, it's scrap tent and mercenary tent, I know. We don't know camp shelter. I don't care to know camp shelter at that rate, so we'll just pass on it. Hmm. I am tempted, though, to pick up a few sleeping bags. I gotta put my backpack on to do so. I am willing to do that. I am willing to put my backpack on. It's gonna cost a little bit of money. I think we'll carry three sleeping bags on Lort. And if we need to camp out, if we're at like uh, in, in the grid in one of those workshops and we're damaged because we fought beak things or something and we need to camp out, uh, Lort will be able to take care of that. Yeah, let's do it. Actually, you know what? We don't even have to keep the backpack on. These don't weigh that much. So right now, the backpack requ uh, lowers the encumbrance of whatever is in it by 50%. Um, so we are at total weight 40 of 41, so we're, like, unencumbered, entirely unencumbered, basically. We're essentially weightless. If we take this off, our weight's going to go up to 47, but we are still essentially unencumbered. We have 2% encumbrance. It barely affects our speed at all. It barely affects any of our training abilities. Like, we, we, are, we are perfectly fine. How much strength does Lord have? 26. Hobbs is up to 30. Inu's at 42 strength. Must be because she's our engineer and she carries around components everywhere she goes. Or because she's been carrying animal skins and dried meat for a long time now. Holy crap. Holy crap. I'm tempted to give that backpack to somebody else now so that they can carry all of that. You know, she doesn't even have to carry that backpack on her. She could take that backpack and put it in her inventory now. Uh, we don't need the meat out of it because we have the meat in Hobbs' backpack. The only person who has to actually be wearing their bag is Hobbs because um, we need to be able to eat the food out of the backpack. We're not going to that slave farm. We're going to head to Drifter's Last, and that means we're going to head this way, I think. All right. Holy crap, guys. That's all I have to say to that. I am tempted to buy that storm house in the future as well, just so we have like property down here that doesn't belong to an outpost that can be attacked. Um, that's part of uh, Tech Hunter territory. I do like uh, I do like buildings that belong to cities or way stations and stuff like that. I usually like it uh, because you know we can rely on the the city's power grid for our power, but uh, in this case, no, we wouldn't be able to.
we'll get around this water and then we'll head south to Drifters last. We gotta keep our eyes out for things moving as well. We could still run into spiders here, and in fact we could run into skin spiders here potentially, I think. I don't think it's likely that we're gonna run into blood spider. We might. Who are these? Caravan! Trader's Guild! Trader's Guild is basically uh, the UC. So there's the Western Hive Traders who are, you know, they're, they're grumpy, but they're relatively friendly. Trader's Guild are also sort of slavers at the same time. <laughs> we call them Trader's Guild, we call this a caravan. But we can ultimately also call these guys potentially slavers. I think I'm going to have Lort come up and talk to them. Maybe they have something that we could... I mean, who knows? I don't know what Trader's Guild sells. Let's trade. Um, fabric, apparently. You can always come across a few med kits, and you can sell them some stuff for money. They got 6,400, so if you were carrying too much, you could dump some stuff on them. I mean, we'll buy the fabric, sure, why not? But uh, ultimately, there's not much that these guys have that we want. Let's keep heading this direction and make for Drifters last. We're traveling at times two speed. I, I don't I spend a lot of time traveling at times three speed and pausing. Uh, so travel, pause, travel, pause, travel, pause when I play solo. But I feel like I could play, when we're just moving in the open like this, I feel like I can play a lot more um, consistent without having to ever pause the game really when we uh, play at uh, times two speed. Only pause when there's serious situations. Like when we see people and we need to know who they are, I can pause, totally, for sure. That, that's perfectly fine. Everybody, everybody should be doing that. There, there's a lot of people who play like games that have a pause feature in no pause mode or no pause challenge, or it's like RimWorld, no pause challenge, and I'm just, I'm not entertained by that at all. Like the game has the pause feature. It's an integral part of the gameplay. It's like playing um, Boulder's Gate or something without pausing or like Dragon Age without it. Like. Why? Why would you do that? It's not entertaining at all. I guess maybe it's entertaining for you playing the game. Okay, I acknowledge it could be entertaining for you playing the game. I want to fight these bone dogs. Hey, bone doggies! You're wolves, right? Yeah, you are wolves. Good. Hey, bone doggies! I don't know if there's a whole group of you or not, but uh, hi! Hi! I've got desert sabers. Oh, we don't take very much damage from them. Good. 30, except when they hit us in bad spots. When they hit us in bad spots. Hehe. <laughs> it so sounds like, you know, tell me where the bone dog touched you. Th then we could get in some trouble. Okay, Mortez, you were the one looting recently, right? Yeah, okay, there's four bone dogs. One. I don't care about their uh, teeth. Two, three, and four. We don't need to uh, loot their teeth to kill them. I mean, if you if you take their skin and all of their meat, they die pretty quick. I I I don't know if you realize that, but they die pretty quick. Mortez took a little bit of hurt there. We took a little bit of damage. When they hit our well-protected areas, we barely took anything. But when they hit areas that are not protected so well, we definitely took a little bit of damage. So Drifter's Last is this away now. Let's go. Let's go! We have a dust storm. Finally, the head armor is working in our favor. We're only getting a minus three weather penalty right now on... Um, whose stats is this? Who am I looking at stats? Dirt. Dirt's stats. He's only getting a minus three penalty. Lort is getting... Uh, Minus three as well. Okay, cool. It is a percentage penalty, isn't it? I thought Dust Storm was a percentage penalty. Maybe it's not, though. I'm not sure. Okay, I can see the windmills of Drif Drifters last in the distance. It won't be long now, guys. Okay, we are here. Let's pass through the gates. Let's see if they uh, want to cause any trouble. Nope. Nobody trying to search me. Fantastic. Good job, guys. Uh, it is nighttime, so we're probably going to want to find the bar right away. It looks like this is an inn right here. 
That must be the bar then, right? Or do they have an alternative one? They do have an armor merchant, which is great. What is this? Ranger shop, okay. And this is a uh, barracks. Yeah, so this in-looking guy is the bar. Is there anything for sale here? Uh, residential, small... Yeah, they've got a bug house for sale here. On the wall, by the gate, no less. I don't know if you could get turrets around this backside of it. Hmm. Looks like it's just that bug house. And uh, there's a number of shacks out front. None of them are for sale. Okay, well, let's get inside the inn here. I don't think... I mean, we've got some damaged people. If, if it costs... What do the beds cost? 150. What a rip. If they cost 50, then I would totally be on board for that. But at 150, I don't know. Um, let's take a look at the vendor. What do you got? I haven't been here for ages. What do you have? Uh, lots of bounties available. That's what all these little books are. These are all wanted posters for bounties. A uh, bit of food. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of food. I've got a lot of uncooked food waiting for me, but I'll, I'll buy that. I'm okay with that. Of course, we've got uh, rum and grog and uh, whatnot available here in sake. These are not contraband in the UC, unlike uh, hashish. Let's also take a quick peek at who's available here. Uh, skins, but you can't hire him, it looks like. Jinsei, a drifter. Thought we've seen you already, bro. Anyway, that's a hive prince. Uh, plastic surgeon, cool. Gills, we can't talk to him. Who's over here? We have Photo, another uh, hive prince. Not a lot of hive workers. Okay, this is a hive soldier, right? Yeah, hive soldiers have these wide heads. I uh, can't talk to him, though. Looks like a mercenary captain. Yep, if we wanted some mercenaries. Definitely okay with hiring some mercenaries from time to time. Bean hop. A drifter. Cool. Who's over here? Horus. Lots of drifters. We can't talk to very many of them, though. There is a skeleton here, Bland, but we can't talk to him. Also looks absolutely freaking great in the head. That's fantastic. But yeah, we can't talk to him. And then Orsome, another hive prince, it looks like. Not a lot of drones, like worker drones. Lots of hive princes, not very many worker drones. So we are going to wait until daytime. It's uh, 2.37, and during the day... Actually, you know what? You know what? Chicken butt. Ray. Engage snack mode. Nobody currently sees you, Ray? Is anybody coming this way? Does not appear to be. Hey, Ray. I I know it's locked, Ray. Are are you a dumbass? It's 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 auto saving. Okay, there we. I know it's locked, Ray. Pick the lock, please. Oh crap! Somebody's coming. Are they gonna see Ray? They might. Okay, we're not committing a crime anymore. Oh, ho, 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 ho. they're they're standing guard here. Oh, damn it, Ray! They're standing guard here. They don't see her. Pick the lock. If they turn around, they might see us. All I want is for her experience to go up here. Pick successful. We could go in. It's three in the morning. I'm not. I'm not going to go in. We're we're not. We're not all about that. You know, it's nighttime. It's really easy to pick these locks without being detected right now. And as soon as I start doing this, that guy comes this way. But it is nighttime. It's dark. We, we already got it. Okay, never mind. What shop is this that we just picked? The armor shop. What do you know? That's the place that we want to go talk to people in. We'll go over here. It's a lower percentage, and there's some light nearby. But there's nobody watching it, and I don't see any guards coming to it yet. Oh, crap. No, that's a guard coming to it. Okay, committing crimes went down. It ended. Let's pick the lock now. 
I like when you're when you're picking locks. The committing crimes only lasts for um, three seconds or whatever. Okay, somebody sees us. No, they don't see us. They were running to the bed. I'm just I'm just paranoid. He was standing over here and then he ran to the bed. We we didn't actually get to. Oh, we we got it. We 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 unlocked it. Great. Let's move along. That one's not locked. <laughs> we're just going around town unlocking all of the doors. The reason why is because I want like 30 lock picking, maybe 40 if we're going to go to the uh the um Witchmabugger, the uh workshops. Because I'm sure there's going to be chests in there that are going to require at least that much lock picking to get into. We got a couple doors here. It's starting to get light out though. Yeah, like we're detected right now. And by like this guy of all people. This Empire Peasant is the guy who detected us. Not even a guard, because it's starting to get a little bit lighter out. Although we're going pretty close to the guards here. And not being seen. But if I go here, like, he's probably going to see me. I just want to go undetected and pick some locks, guys. That's all I want. Picking some locks undetected. This is assassination, by the way. Uh, this uh, skull with 11%. Our assassination skill is probably like 1 or 0. 1. Yeah. We have no chance of hitting these guards. Yeah, so this shop is a little harder. The guards patrol by it quite frequently. But we're still in stealth. Like, he's, he's standing with his back to us. Let's pick the lock. I mean, we've got 40% chance. We should... Oh, the guard's coming. Wonder if this guard will see us. Don't see me, guard. Oh, he saw me. No, he didn't see me. He could see me. We were revealed. He just couldn't figure out what I was doing in time. Oh, good! 22 lock picking with 71% of the way to the next. All right, well, I'm going to, you know, pick whatever I can. We could go inside these shops and pick the locks of their chests and stuff inside, too. Like, that's good as well. But I'm going to uh, do what we can, and um, I'll be back in the daytime when we can get into that uh, armor shop. So I'm at the UC Construction Trader. They have advanced harpoonery here. I'm really tempted to have Ray break in tonight and try and steal advanced harpoonery. Her theft isn't great, but if she's not very encumbered, she should probably be able to get a blueprint. Um, it's hard to steal these from way stations because way stations the shop is open 24-7 and uh, the shopkeeper and the guards are there 24-7 so you can't really steal as easily from them I would really like, as my chair squeaks because I'm adjusting to not have to spend 25000 for advanced harpoonery on the other hand I would really like Ray not to die to a single hit to the head like um, Eon did when he went and stole a blueprint for us. Mm, excuse me. And I would really like Ray not to be enslaved and sent to uh, prison either. So I don't know. Um, Inu is carrying all of the animal skins, so I have her over here. I, I thought this door would open at 6 a.m., but it didn't. I mean, this shop opened at 6 a.m. The travel shop, you know, let's take... Okay, uh, 6.30. It opened at 6.30. Let's take a look at the travel shop, though, real quick. Let's see what they have. We're casing the joint. If I am going to send Ray in to steal something, I want to know what they have ahead of time. Holy crap. Uh, these are all scavengers backpacks. We don't care about them. They've got large backpacks. There is another kind of backpack... Ooh, ooh hold on. Drifter's boots, black bandana, hachigane, no. Red bandana, crap. I was wondering if maybe they had these masked helmets available. Um, or these uh, Kusari Zukins are good too. They have Dust Storm and Acid Protection. Or the Karuta Zukins, who also have Dust Storm and Acid Protection. The Karutas have better overall head coverage, though, it seems. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, kinda, I would kind of like to have some Acid Protection, is what I'm getting at. But these require a chainmail bench to make, and we're not quite at that point yet. We need some more tech before we can get steel and chainmail and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, yeah. Oh, what's this? Straw hat. Okay, that's no big deal. I already know straw hat. Um, 
Yeah, we, we want to case these joints out and see what they have and see if it's worth stealing anything from them in the first place. Um, and I was saying there is another kind of backpack. So there are two additional kinds of backpacks that we haven't seen yet. There's a trader's backpack, which is in the game files, and it used to exist in the game, but it's been removed as far as I can tell, because I've never seen a trader's backpack. It behaves exactly like the medium backpack and the large backpack, the regular traders and the large traders backpack, except they allow stacking of items the same way that these wooden backpacks do. They seem to have been removed from the game. I, I can sort of understand it. It's sort of a balanced thing. If you want space in your bag, get these backpacks. If you want the ability to stack things, you have to deal with less space. If you have both of them, it's sort of a balanced thing. If you had a large backpack that allowed stacking, that would be insane. Um, and then there's the thief backpacks that work like these, but they have 60% encumbrance reduction, and they don't affect your combat or stealth abilities as much. Um, and help you steal things easier. Uh, but yeah, there's those traders backpacks that allow stacking in them, and then there's one more kind of backpack. Uh, it's, I think, called a merchant's backpack. This guy's actually got one. See this backpack he's got, how it's a darker color and orange? These things are huge! They're ginormous bags. They're great to get. Um, you can get them from these people, potentially, if you, uh, if you deal with these merchants. I don't know if you, can, if you have to kill them and loot them, or if you can steal it off them or what, but you can, you can get these huge backpacks from them. You can't buy them, though. Okay, so let's go to the armor smith here. What, what's the name of the shop, actually? It's an armory. And let's see what they've got. Tin can recipe? Mass helmet recipe, maybe? I don't know. Let's find out. And then I have to decide if I want to buy it or try and steal it. Are you seriously having this conversation with me right now? Let's trade. Okay, that's a lot of armor. Samurai armor, samurai leg plates... Armor face plates, iron hats, samurai helmets, flared helmets, visored helmets, masked helmets, police helmets. Yeah, I would totally take a police helmet as well. That's the corresponding thing to our uh, plate jackets. Plate jackets were originally called police jackets or police armor or something like that. So what do you have? You have samurai cloth pants, mercenary plate, black plate jacket, which is what we have. Samurai armor. Ooh, that'd be good to have. I would like to get samurai armor eventually. It's much more protective than this plate jacket. But uh, it also doesn't cover as much area. Plate jacket. Armored face plates. That's these guys. Okay, so armored face plates aren't that great. Not the biggest fan of those. Uh, samurai boots. I mean, it would be good to have. Spiked helmet. I don't really want that. Masked helmet. Maybe. Iron hat. I do want iron hats so that I could go out into the uh, black desert, potentially. Police helmet. They have it. Samurai leg plates. Hachigane. Visored helmet. And... Pleated long boots. So that's these, yeah? Yeah. Pretty protective. Definitely something I want in the long run for like my advanced heavy combat people. So we have access to the police helmet. 53% blunt, 46% cut at high grade. We could obviously get better. 41 harpoon. Serious penalty to stealth when wearing them. A combat skill penalty of minus 1. A perception penalty of minus 10. Hmm. So it's quite uh, quite a penalty to wear those, but they're pretty protective. 100% head. Samurai helmets are very good as well. This is standard grade samurai helmet. Has almost as much cut, a lot less blunt. Even bigger stealth penalty, bigger combat penalty, same perception penalty. At that token, I kind of like the police helmet better. The armored hood has less of a combat penalty, no perception penalty. 
the armored hood would be really good if it had like acid protection as well or dust storm protection or something for some kind of heavy ninja dude cool Hmm. I'm not impressed. We're going to go with police helmet, I think. I was kind of hoping for a tin can. But I think we're going to go with police helmets. Twenty-four thirty-four versus 2437. Same harpoon resistance less of a stealth impact still minus three combat only minus five perception on the masked helmet wish I had a it's only 90 percent head coverage though these are a hundred solid heavy helmet with good protection on the face They had a masked helmet available, right? Yeah, they have the masked helmet recipe. So 4233 versus the police helmet at 4233. So it's masked helmet versus police helmet at this point, guys. I can only compare high grade to um, standard grade because they don't have a high grade one of these here, though. But 24 blunt, 34 cut, which is the same as the standard grade samurai. So I imagine that's going to be pretty close on cut. The blunt might be worse. 71 harpoon is probably going to be pretty close. The stealth effect is probably going to be less. It's going to have minus 3 combat. This is minus 1 combat. At a 10 perception. Okay, it's police helmet. Is definitely police helmet, guys. Um, do we purchase it? I think we do. Let's go ahead and buy ourselves a police helmet blueprint. And we will proceed to sell all these skins as well. And make, like, a ton of money as a result of it. Yeah. Okay. Police helmet has been learned. We're going to have to manufacture this guy now in the near future. Okay, so one of our objectives coming down here is being achieved. We have gotten ourselves a better helmet. A nice, sturdy helmet. Now, we need to go exploring a little bit. I want to go up here, but I'm tempted to actually just go out here a little. I think there's another, like, abandoned city all the way down here on the coast. I don't know if it has any... I don't know where any of the ruins out here are, guys. I have no idea. So, should we just explore a little bit? Maybe we'll just go exploring a little bit. Everybody, gather up together. Oh, what's going on here? Who's fighting? Looks like a shop guard versus band of bones. Just one band of bones guy? Well, congratulations. Welcome to slavery, band of bones. This is one of the reasons why I was a little bit of afraid of committing crimes here in Drifter's Last um, and like lockpicking and all that. Because, uh, yes, yes, they, they will enslave you. And I, I didn't want Ray getting enslaved. But at the same token, if you get enslaved, you can just, you know, free yourself. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. All right, I think I'm going to go explore just a smidge on. Or do I want to head back up to the grid? I might head back up to the grid. I'll explore this section up here on our way back to the grid, and we'll sort of work our way to those two uh, workshops that I know exist up there. All right, I'll be back. All right, so we're exploring a little bit. I came all the way over here to the coast. I didn't go south. I probably should go south. I know there's a little city down here. Um, that's being abandoned. We can go take a look at it. But we found a ruin here along the coast. It doesn't look like it's a sciency ruin. It looks like it's an old uh, city. I'm willing to take a look at it. It looks like it's probably abandoned. It's not one of the sciency ruins. It's not a lost library. It's not a lost workshop. It's not like a um, engineering research facility or anything. We still have lots of food. We're okay. We're in a neighborhood where I can sort of see attacks coming. 
so as long as my people aren't all critically injured and on the ground and all that stuff we can sort of dodge people and get back to a city to protect ourselves so at the very least we're probably not going to get wiped out even if we end up losing a few people we probably won't all die who's this skin spiders it looks like people actually but it's skin spiders how many skin spiders so skin spiders are bigger looks like two now they're bigger than blood spiders yeah we got two big old skin spiders here guys they're bigger than blood spiders we get the hundred percent bonus versus them uh... they have worse attack than the blood spiders had though it looks like they're following leader patrolling following leader so is the leader the one in the back or is there another one out here somewhere i am really afraid that we could end up pulling a swarm of skin spiders hey guys okay they're on us they are on to us they're not charging at us but they are definitely on to us hi your bro Sidon isn't here to help you really okay there we go 87 so three good hits uh, we took some damage but it wasn't too bad dirt do your job please and pick up these animal claws they have claws where's the other one over here okay so we're good he's crossing we gotta keep our eyes out for other skin spiders though I want to engage this one when it's alone I'd much rather oh yeah I hate spiders in the water if I had crossbows I could shoot him right now we should get some crossbowmen guys that should be a priority of ours let's get some crossbowmen yeah okay there's more there is more there's three more skin spiders there's also a herd of Garu coming through here so four skin spiders in total so far are there more of them flanking us not that I can see yet this one doesn't seem to want any of our business those three though are coming actually that one's backing off now two of them they're all backing off what the hell you think there's gonna be anything worthwhile in this city guys I suspect that if we go here all that we will find is spiders and death sounds good to me ladies and gents let's get this done I feel like we should have hired mercenaries and brought them here if we want to do this we have to be eminently aware of the spiders that we come across here um, I do not want to run into a swarm of them a patrol of three yeah I can handle that a swarm though I'm not trying to get into any of that. There's some Garu here. Garu aren't really a problem as long as we don't uh, instigate anything with them. That's a lot of them, though. Like we're we're not going to be able to fight that many Garu and win. They'd uh, they'd smack us around and call us Susan a little bit too much. So the spiders are patrolling all the way out there, and we walk into these ruins and we find nothing. what are the names of the ruins just abandoned town because of course it is let's let's head south a little bit and explore down that way a bit uh, so we'll cross the river again I'm gonna head south and take a look at what's that way I don't want to spend too much time down here uh, what is this is this the hook is that what this is called maybe it's not maybe I'm in the wrong spot I don't want to spend too much time here um, I want to start heading up to the grid but uh, we're, we're gonna take a little bit of time to explore the world here while we're in the neighborhood um, we're going to come back eventually because we're going to do thorough exploration of this area. But I want to just spend a little bit of initial time poking my head around and, and, and meeting some new things and killing them. <laughs> See you soon. So we are on the hook and we're approaching that uh, town at the base of the hook here. And I see uh, a battle happening. It's between United City Samurais and Outlaw Swordsmen, Rebel Farmers. Okay, we, we want in on this. We will definitely help out if, uh, okay, we discovered the ruin. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll explore it. We want in on this. I mean, the UC is going to win. Uh, these outlawed uh, farmers are not going to win this battle. 
yeah, they're they're completely getting smoked. So they they are kill on sight to UC apparently. It's getting dark though. Like it's it's bright during the daytime on the hook, but holy crap, is it dark. Dark dark at Oh, excuse me, at night. Ruka, what kind of stuff do these guys have? They have med kits. Straw hats potentially. Um Auto save, lock up, heart protectors, uh, wooden sandals. Doesn't look like these are uniforms. They do have med kits, though. We could steal a whole bunch of med kits from them. It looks like they have just cheap weapons, nothing particularly special. These outlaw farmers, we're not that interested in them. What we are interested in is more skin spiders um, and the chance that we could run into more of them out here. There have been a couple patrols of them. We haven't really done much with them. Uh, that other group of three patrolled away from us, which is great. I like to see that. It means I didn't have to deal with them. There was a mercenary group here as well, a mercenary company we could have hired to protect us <laughs> in case... Oh, fuck. This, these plants, I was like, oh my god, that's like a dozen spider. No, they're just plants. They're just plants, Liz. You're good. You're fine. Nothing is wrong yet as you approach the old abandoned village that could be overrun with spiders. Let's turn the speed down. And let's take a peek. I don't think there's anything here. I'm pretty sure this place is totally empty. There's an outhouse. There's an outhouse. And it's floating off the ground. Take a look at that. This outhouse is floating in midair. But I think that's probably about the only thing we're actually going to find here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there is anything else in this neighborhood. Wish you could repair these buildings. You can make your own little town down here. I mean, I guess you could. You could just build your own little town down in this neighborhood. They have small copper, small copper, a couple copper resources. Anything in this building at the end. Like, no reward for coming here at all, except for, you know, the 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 information that, you know, there is a town here. No reward for coming here at all. So many ruins in this neighborhood that are just totally abandoned. There's no real extreme reason to come here yet. It's not always necessarily going to be that way. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything up in this neighborhood. We we went across over here and came to the abandoned town and then came south. Let's head up through this neighborhood and see if we can find any other points of interest. And then we'll head up towards the grid and we'll take a peek there next time. Thanks for tuning into this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Liz. This has been Kenshi, uh, my, my new favorite game, basically. Um, I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.